have a fun cash game series coming up for you guys. It's on the East Coast, and I've never played poker there before, so I'm pretty stoked. In this series, we'll hit up three states, the District of Columbia, and even host an official meetup game in Baltimore. Let's go. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another video. We are here straight off the plane. Feel like Miley Cyrus, but we're not at LAX. We are at MGM National Harbor. Here with our buddy Karan. We're here for a meetup game that happens tomorrow, but today we're gonna try to hop into the 25 and 510 streets here, see if we can't get away with filming uh, without permission. That's the goal today. So if you're seeing this vlog, that means we got away with it. So without further ado, let's get into the hands. Let's go. I didn't have much expectations for MGM, but as soon as I stepped inside, I was blown away. Their layout and decorations reminded me a lot of Vegas, and this honestly might be the nicest casino I visited to date. We head upstairs to the poker room and get our chips for the 2-5 game, but not before running into a few fans. After taking a picture with Durbo, we sit down in the 2-5 game. I'm in for $1,000. First hand of the night, I look down from the big blind at Pocket Queens, the under the gun straddle is on the button calls and I raise it up to $45 pretty standard so far and both the button and under the gun put in the call we're going three ways to a flop we still have a good hand here an overpair on a 9-5 deuce board with two clubs I lead out for $55 and surprisingly both the opponents call here so we could be up against top pair maybe some flush draws but hopefully not any of the available sets either way we're off to the turn which comes the four of clubs definitely not a blank this connects the board in a lot of ways ace three now makes the wheel three six we can probably rule out of their ranges the front door flush draw is completed still either way though i'm gonna get value here and uh, let the opponents tell me that i'm beat I bet out for $90 having the queen of clubs in my hand. Under the gun gets out of the way, but the button finds the call. So we're going heads up to the river, which comes the queen of diamonds. Bang, we river the set. We don't have a boat, so we don't exactly have this board locked up here. We're still losing to any straights or flushes. For that reason, I decide to bet out here very small for a tenth the size of the pot. We get raised, it's pretty obvious that we have the worst hand. We can probably fold. But when the opponent just snap calls us for 55, I'm definitely going to be good here. No raise means no straight or flush. Sure enough, I turn over my cards and he mucks his. We're up $335 early on in this session. Jack 10 of diamonds is the next hand we'll go over here. I'm in the plus one and raise it up to $20. Player to my left and the big blind both call. Three ways to the flop here in a $60 pot, giving us an open-ended straight draw and a backdoor flush draw comes 984 rainbow. Big blind checks it over to me and in between two opponents, I usually start with a check. Also, given the fact that I just have jack high here, I like to exercise my option to check in the plus two position, checks behind, bringing in a very interesting card, the ace of diamonds. I say it's interesting because the ace is going to hit our range a lot harder than theirs. In fact, we're going to have more ace king and ace queen than them. But not only that, we now pick up the diamond draw to go with our open ended straight draw. So when the big blind checks over to me, I now need to bet out large here and try to get them to fold. I still just have jack high. However, if we do get called, we hopefully will improve on the river and win a large pot here. Nevertheless, everyone finds the folds. We scoop down this $60 pot with jack high and uh, life's going pretty swimmingly and we look down at ace 10 of clubs here in the next hand 1250 in my stack i'm in the small blind straddles on the cutoff calls and i raise it up to 50 dollars two green chips is the price of poker and only the big blind elects to put in the call so we're going heads up out of position to a flop which gives us top pair 10 7 5 with two spades Pretty good board for us. We have top pair, top kicker. So I like to go for a half pot size bet here for $55. And the big blind puts in the call. So maybe he has king 10, queen 10. Maybe he has a hand like 6, 8 or spades. Either way though, we're going to find out when the jack of diamonds comes in on the turn. Not going to slow down here. I still want to get value from some of those spade draws. Although 8, 9 now makes a straight, which is a little bit worrisome. Still, in low stakes poker, you want to bet until the opponent tells you that they have a better hand. So I go for value here and bet out for $85. Just like I mentioned, we're definitely going to fold to aggression, which is exactly what happens when he re-raises us to $215. No brainer decision for me here. He could have 8-9, he could have a set of 7s, 10s, maybe a hand like even 10 jack that improves on the turn. No sense in me putting more money in the middle here when I'm most likely behind. So with that, I get out of the way and uh, we lose that hand.
Moving on to the next hand, we look down at the Cowboys from the Low Jack. Under the gun limps, and I raise it up to $20. We're going to get called in two spots. The big blind and under the gun both find the call, so we're going three ways to the flop. When the flop comes, 7-6-3 rainbow. Pretty great board for us, and big blind checks over to under the gun. I'm expecting it to check over to me considering I'm in position on both opponents, but under the gun fires out here for $20. Interesting line, not exactly sure why he's leading out into me when I was the preflop raiser. Hopefully he doesn't have a set of sevens or sixes, or maybe that elusive four, five for the straight. I could be going for a raise here, which might be the better move in the long run. Just finding out where we're at and putting more money in the middle when we're most likely ahead. But in the moment, I just decide to flat call the $20 and the other player gets out of the way. So our heads up to the six of hearts on the turn. The six of hearts is a nice card to see because it reduces the combos of pocket sixes the opponent can have. He's now just nutted at pocket sevens, threes, or four, five. And when he checks over to me, it's most likely that we have the best hand here. So I'm gonna go for value and I fire out half pot for $50. If he calls us here, I'm not exactly sure what he has. He'd probably just go for the check raise with like a set of sevens or threes. So when he just puts in the call, my brain's in a little bit of a blender here and we're gonna see the deuce of hearts on the river. Not expecting him to lead out into me, but if you've learned anything from this hand so far, it's just that you can't predict what's gonna happen here. And under the gun, sure enough, leads out for $50. He leads out on the flop, check calls the turn, and then just donks into me on the river. Do I go for the raise here? Do I just snap call him? I decide to snap call him here, and he turns over ace three of hearts here for one pair. We turn over our cards and are gonna take down that pot. A raise was not gonna get called there, so luckily I didn't leave any money on the table. But what a weird way to play that hand, and uh, just happy I'm on the right side of things there. There's a vlog watcher to our left named Ryan, and he senses that we're getting a little bit dehydrated, so he buys us a degenerate Gatorade, aka a blue moon. And with our newfound hydration, we're on to the next hand here. Thousand in our stack, and I look down at ace queen of clubs from the big blind. With the straddle on and under the gun calling, the cutoff decides to raise it up to $50. This is definitely a really good spot to go for another re-raise and make it $150, but I just decided to flat call here and the under the gun now re-raises to $260. Let me profile this under the gun player. He's an action player. He's been three betting a bunch and losing a bunch as well. When the cutoff bet folds here for that $50 bet, I decide to look up the under the gun player here. We could get into a large pot here against a spewy opponent, which is definitely what we want to be doing. Although it is better to be the one with the aggression. So uh, we're going to see what the flop brings in. On a 5-5 deuce board, I start with a check here. We have some backdoor draws like the wheel, maybe the backdoor club draw. I check it over to under the gun and he bets out for $185. Now, could he be doing this with pocket pairs? Sure. Could he be doing this with king queen, queen jack? Yeah, that's also in his range as well. So I think with my backdoor draws and my ace high here, I need to be putting in $185. I play the hand weird so far, so I can't just give up now. $185 more dollars going into the middle. And we see a beautiful card on the turn, the four of clubs. Brings in the backdoor nut flush draw. It also gives us a gutter to the three, giving us probably the best hand. The action's on me. Picking up all this additional equity, I want to put him in a really tough spot here. I have around five. $550 left in my stack and I decide we need to go for all of it here and put max pressure on any of his hands like sixes through nines. Maybe we can get him to fold. I rip it all in for $550 and what does he do that we do not want to see? The snap call. Like literally within seconds he puts a chip into the middle. We are in tough shape and we're going to need to suck out on the river any ace, queen, three or club hopefully would give us the best hand. But when the river bricks out the jack of hearts, we're crushed. There's no way we can win this pot here when we get snap called on the turn. 2050 in the middle and I turn over my cards because I need to see what he has here. And uh, he turns over ace 10 offsuit and mucks his cards. We're going to scoop down this $2,000 pot with ace high. He snap called me on the turn with a gutter and a worse ace high. How brutal would it have been if a 10 of spades or 10 of diamonds peels off on the river and he would have scooped us there. But we are ecstatic. $2,000 coming my way. This might have been the largest pot I've ever won with just ace high. And uh, definitely a strange one, but uh, no complaints on my end. Let's freaking go. Great, right, you guys, a little mid-session update. How are we good on that last hand? I have no idea. That's absolutely nuts. Uh, but we got the win, and now we're up to 1,900. Got a few more hands in me. 
and then we're gonna try to get some rest before our meetup game tomorrow. So yeah, let's jump right back into the hands, let's go. Witness something pretty cool at the table, pocket kings versus pocket kings, and then we're onto our next hand, ace queen again. We're in the small blind with the offsuit variety. Few limps to me and I raise it up to $30, and only the player in the plus one position finds a call. So we're going heads up to a flop here, which is good to see bet on, eight seven deuce with two spades, and I fire out for $25. When the player puts in the call, we are a little bit worried, but uh, the king of clubs on the turn is a great card for us to represent. I'm gonna bet out here for two thirds the size of the pot, $85 is the price you'd have to call to continue. And just like that, he mucks his card, so power poker here representing that card that's gonna hit our range a lot harder than his, and uh, we take down that pot and we're onto the next one here with pocket sixes from the cutoff. I start with a raise here to $20 in the big blind calls. We're heads up to a flop here, which comes king high. King a8, the board is paired. We still have a pair on this board, which is hard to make. So when he leads out for $25, I'm not going anywhere. I put in the call. If he has a king or an eight, we're in pretty rough shape. So the best card for us to see on the turn would be the six of hearts. Bang! We turn the boat, a very disguised boat at that. We we have a freaking boat here. Please have ace eight. Please have ace king. Just pay us off for a large sizing here. But unfortunately, he checks it over to me. Not exactly great news. He would continue to fire with all of those hands. I'm going to bet out here for $55. I still need to bloat the size of the pot here with such a strong hand. Maybe he's trapping here. And uh, yeah, let's put more money in the middle. I bet out for $55. And great news for us, he puts in the call. When the river comes the ace of diamonds and he checks it over to me, he only has around $80 left in his stack and that needs to get into the middle here. So I put them all in for $80 and he goes into the tank. Please sir, just put your money in the middle here. You're not good and I want your money, but uh, sure enough, he folds, but he folds showing an ace. How does he fold an ace here? Getting to the river and he makes top pair. Feels like we lose out on an additional $80 worth of value. Still pretty sick though that I turned the boat. With 2,000 in our stack, I look down at ace five offsuit here from the big blind. This is the last hand of the night and the straddle's on. So the action folds to me and I pop it up to $30. Our buddy Ryan to our left, he's the one who bought us that blue moon. He's in the straddle and he puts in the call. When the flop comes queen, queen, deuce with two spades, I lead out for $30 and uh, Ryan puts in the call. We still just have ace high here on the turn when the jack of hearts peels off. And uh, I'm gonna fire again here for $45, putting a lot of pressure on all of his hands, like king high and uh, other weird hands. I bet out for $45 and he min raises me to 90, which is definitely not great news. I snap fold and he later said five, three of spades. So he was bluffing me on that one. A semi bluff at best though, he had the spade draw. Just like that, we rack up our chips and head to the cage. All right, you guys, that wraps up our session here from the MGM Grand National Harbor. Got into that 2-5 game for $1,000, out for $1,896. Nice little three-hour profit there of $896. Really cool meeting all of you guys, and thanks for the beers. Next video should be from our meetup game at the Horseshoe Baltimore, where we have over 140 people signed up already. Absolutely insane, and I love the turnout and the energy. It's gonna be nuts. I'm giving away some shirts tomorrow. It's gonna be sick. If you guys wanna help support the channel, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're new. As always, good luck on the felt. Appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.